Hi, this is Lee Ellis with another installment of Leading with Honor Coaching. You know, for the last few months, we've been using our model, our Leadership Attributes model, which we've had for, well, over 20 years. We got it in the 90s. I, my team and I built that. And we have made one change to it, and that's what I want to talk about today. In the early 2000s, we added emotional intelligence. So that was a big thing, new thing for me. I had just read Primal Leadership, a book uh, about emotional intelligence, and nobody had ever talked about that much. But that book by Daniel Goldman, Richard Boyatzis, and Annie McKee was a great book. I read it, and then I listened to it on audiobook because I just knew that was so powerful and so important because everybody has emotions. We live with emotions. Part of our brain, the amygdala and that part is, uh, of our brain is where our emotions are and they respond very quickly, two to four times faster than our neocortex, which is our logical, intelligent thinking part of our brain. And so we have to be careful that our emotions don't drive us into saying something or doing something that we're going to regret later. Now, we all have done that, so we have to learn to manage our emotions. We have to coach ourselves. You know, last month we, our, we were talking about results relationship and how we're wired mainly for one or the other, 40% one way and 40% the other way. And we have to coach ourselves and learn to adapt to add some of that some of those tactics and behaviors from the other side. Well, the same thing is true with emotional intelligence. And in those, we have four, uh, first of all, you have to be self-aware and aware of others. Awareness is the main thing. And then your response, awareness, response. Self-awareness, what is happening with my emotion, what's coming up, and I've got to manage it so I can respond appropriately. I don't need to yell at somebody right now, even though I may be feeling that way. Or I don't need to go hug them. In this situation right now, it might not work. It might not be good. And likewise, we need to be aware of the response of, of the response of how others are responding to their emotions, and we need to manage how we respond to them. So when we see that somebody's really happy, we need to respond appropriately. We need to, when we see they're off track and they're uh, concerned or whatever, we need to respond appropriately in a way that's going to be helpful. We have to think that through. So remember, uh, you may not remember, but uh, in the old days, people said, you know, when something happens like this emotionally, you got to count to five. And that was great advice because that slows it down and lets you slows your amygdala down, your emotional part down, let your cognitive part take over and work through and decide what is the most effective way to respond and then coach yourself on that. Well, this is so important and there are many books written on it now and there's a lot of things out about it now. But you know, Viktor Frankl, whose book I read uh, in, in, in the POW camp and then I met Viktor Frankl a few weeks after I came home, he was speaking at the University of Georgia. I read that book more than five times now, but there's a great, great quote in this book by Viktor Frankl. He says, between stimulus and response, there is a space. And in that space lies our freedom and power to choose our response. We want to choose that response. And in our response lies our growth and freedom. That is a powerful, powerful coaching piece to remember. That in that space, we have to make a choice of how we respond to somebody else's behavior and our own too. That's it for today. I hope you'll check out the blog and also take a look at the handout that we provided on emotional intelligence. Thank you. Have a great week. God bless.